Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Sorazzle Dazzle Physics. In today's session, guys, we're going to be talking about the magnetic flux density, flux and area, and getting the formula phi is equal to B A cos theta, guys. Okay, so this is the follow-up video from my previous one in which I talked about magnetic flux, magnetic flux linkage, and magnetic flux density. So make sure you've watched that video before watching this one. Right, so today we're going to connect magnetic flux density, flux and area, and we're going to see where does this formula come from, phi is equal to B A cos theta. Okay, so previously we had the idea of magnetic flux density, yes? Magnetic flux density is equal to the flux divided by area. And we gave it the formula of magnetic flux density is B, the flux is phi, and A is going to be the area. Area, let's do the units first, area is going to be meters squared, Flux is going to be Weber, capital B, uh, capital W, lowercase b, and magnetic flux density is going to be Tesla, capital T. Looking at this picture, hopefully we can see what we're talking about. Magnetic flux density is the flux divided by area. And by the flux, I mean this basically means the number of field lines, number of field lines uh, threading, yes, which we are going to go through this area here. So when someone's talking about the area, it means this area here. Uh, this thing in purple is going to be a coil of wire. So it's a coil of wire which has been placed in the field. This is a 3D diagram. So we've got the North Pole here, South Pole here, and here we have a coil, guys, around the edge that has been placed inside the field here. Uh, so only the purple bit is the coil. So, oh, so here is the coil. Uh, we'll put down square coil here. So this is the square coil over here. So we have the field lines threading this coil over here. Easy stuff. Okay, so hopefully you have the idea of that the magnetic flux density is equal to flux divided by area, B is equal to phi over A. But where does the formula phi is equal to B A cos theta come from? Where does that come from? We're going to be talking about that today. Okay, so, right, so in order to explain this, I draw the following diagram once again. I've got a north pole over here and a south pole over there. Let's draw some of those field lines going out of the north and into the south. So there we go, out of the north and into the south over here. There we go, they're going all the way across, uh, and there we go, over here. From here, we're going to redraw this diagram, but only a sideways view. So right now, obviously, you know it's a square, but if you looked at that sideways on, what would you see? Well, hopefully you have an idea that you just see, let's say, on the side over here, the north, you'd have see the south, and you'd just see this line. This line is over here. There we go. Yeah? Easy stuff. So that's a sideways on view. Uh, we're going to draw the field lines, so if you get the field lines are going across, there we go, the field lines are going across over here, here we go. Right, um, now, from here, I'm just going to label the following. I'm going to add, so imagine it over here, uh, this piece of paper is going to be the red coil. We're going to add a normal to the surface, so imagine I was to put a normal to the surface over here, there we go. So wonderful, look, the normal to the surface is there, yeah, in that diagram 3D, and over here, it's like this, over here. There we go, that's my normal to the surface. So imagine, obviously, here is your uh, square coil, and we have the normal to the surface here. Right, so I've drawn it once over here, but let's say we rotate this coil within the field. We're going to rotate the coil within the field. So we're going to rotate it around the field, let's draw the diagrams. Um, so that's my first one, I'm going to just draw it again and draw it again, and draw it again, and draw it again over here. So here, there's the, all these lines here. So as this rotates, this line will be horizontal, yes? And afterwards, it will then go vertical, yes? And then afterwards, it will go horizontal again. Don't forget, we're going to rotate this to there, to there, to there, to there, and then back to the central position over here, back to the central position over here. Right, the normal to the surface, we can draw on each one of them. So here it's pointing downwards, the normal to the surface. Uh, and then it's going this way, then going upwards, then going across over here. So it's going to go round and round and round and round. Oh, I forgot my field line, the direction. So I'm just going to miss out the north and south. So here it is, it's going across over here. There we go, north and south, it's going all the way across. There, 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 and there, there, there. There. So that's going to be the rotation, so for one complete cycle. Uh, we can put down at time t is equal to zero, obviously it will be here, but for one complete oscillation, we know that obviously it will be complete the time period for one oscillation, so that will be at time t, 
a time period here. Okay, right, so now we have an idea of this as it goes round and round and round. Let's talk about when is there the maximum flux? When is there the maximum number of lines passing through it? So what about the maximum flux? So in which orientation will it have the maximum flux passing through it? The maximum flux passing through it. Well, hopefully we have an idea that when it's like this, you will get the maximum lines passing through it over here. And when the square core is like this, you'll get the minimum lines passing through it. Nothing's passing through it here. So in this uh, position, we get the maximum flux. In this one, we will get a minimum flux. And then over here, we get maximum. Uh, and then here, maximum flux. I'm going to put phi down over for here. And then here, we get minimum flux. And here, I get the maximum flux over here. Obviously, when it's in this rotation here. All right, so now from here, we're going to incorporate the normal to the surface to this diagram here. So we're going to say theta is the angle between, it's the angle between the normal and field. Normal and field. So normal and field direction. So in this case, you can see the angle in this one is zero because the normal is this way and the field is this way. So therefore, in this one, theta is equal to zero. Yes, this one, we can see that. Uh, the angle between the normal and the field, look, it's 90 degrees, so theta is 90 degrees over here. And then this one, we're going to get uh, theta is equal to what? So obviously it's 180. And then theta is equal to 270 in this degrees. And now last of all, theta over here is zero, because we've made one complete rotation round. So we've gone all the way around here. Lots of people get confused because they don't recognize that theta is the angle between the normal to the surface and the field, not the angle between this line and the field. So look, the common misconception is people think that we look at this line of the coil and the field and we think it's 90 degrees. No, theta is zero in this case here. Theta is zero. Okay, so from here we're going to sketch a graph of flux versus the angle right now. So the flux versus angle. We're going to plot the, the flux on the y-axis and the angle of theta on the x-axis over here. So first of all, we're going to obviously go from 0, uh, then we're going to go from 90, 180, 270, and then 360 degrees. Everyone happy? We're, so we've made this entire um, thing here, one complete, uh, going all the way around here. Well, look, we can see that when theta is 0, yes, we're getting the maximum flux. So obviously, it will be at the top here. There we go. And then theta is 90, we get the minimum. And then obviously 180, obviously it'd be minus flux over here, so it's down here. And 270 is the minimum flux again. And last of all, 360 over here. So the graph looks like this, everyone. So I'm trying to draw it perfectly. Uh, there we go. There we go over here. Okay, and finally, hopefully you can see that this function is a cos function. And therefore, we can use the following formula, that phi is equal to B A cos of the angle theta, everyone. Because look, it's a cos function here. So phi is equal to B A cos of the angle theta, where B is going to be the magnetic flux density. So this is the magnetic flux density. Uh, we also know that A is going to be the area of the surface. So it's that area. So scrolling back to that diagram, don't forget, it's the area of this. So it's the, the effective area of this over here in between the loop, the area in between that square coil over here. So this is the magnetic flux density. A is going to be the area, and don't forget what theta is. Theta is going to be the angle between the normal to the surface, between normal and uh, the field lines and, and the field. So at theta is equal to the angle between the normal and the field lines over here. And that's why we have the formula phi is equal to BA cos of the angle theta. My advice to you is that make sure you can visualize where this comes from. It's because we put the square coil within a uniform magnetic field. We place that square coil within a new uniform magnetic field. And as we rotate it, we're looking at how the flux changes. So in which position will we get maximum flux and the minimum flux here? And then finally, we can see that we get the maximum flux when theta is zero. Don't forget, theta is the angle between the normal and the surface and the field. So the normal to the surface and the field here, that's going to be the value of theta. And as you can see for the first one, theta is zero. And obviously that's maximum flux passing through. And then we, as it rotates round, it's the minimum flux.
That's why when theta is 90, the flux is minimum. So look, look at my graph, the flux is minimum. And that's why we have the formula phi is equal to B A cos of the angle theta. Phi is equal to B A cos of the angle theta. Okay, right, now the last thing we're going to do is this. We're going to try and incorporate the idea of omega into here. Right, so if you've forgotten what omega is, omega stands for the angular velocity. So the omega stands for the angular velocity. Angular velocity, if you've forgotten what that is, it's the rate of rotation. So in simple terms, it's going to be the rate of rotation. So it's the rate of a rotation. Uh, so let's say we had this and we spin it round. It's how fast that is making a turn. So it's going to be the rate of rotation. And therefore, the simple formula for omega, omega will be equal to theta divided by time taken. Yes, it's angle swept divided by time. So it's angle swept divided by the time taken. OK, so hopefully you've covered this when you're looking at simple harmonic motion and circular motion. But now we're going to use this, obviously, because it's going to be rotating in the idea of flux over here. So when we have phi is equal to B A cos theta, we can then incorporate the omega t here. So we therefore have phi is equal to B A cos, and look, we can have, look, replacing theta, it becomes cos omega t. There we go. So as you can see, we've now combined. So phi is equal to B A cos of the angle omega t over here. And you may want to use the other formula, which is going to be omega is equal to 2 pi divided by the time period. Yes, but if you don't have the time period, you might want to use omega is equal to 2 pi f, which is going to be the frequency. So you might see in another format, last of all, I'm just substituting omega for 2 pi f. So phi is equal to b a cos open bracket 2 pi f t. There we go. And there we go, guys. You can see phi is equal to B A cos 2 pi F T here. So obviously I've used omega and I've added it to our previous formula of phi is equal to B A cos theta. And that's it for another session of Surrazzle Dazzle Physics. Make sure you hit the like, subscribe to get my channel going, and good luck in your studies. Ciao, ciao, and goodbye.